DigitalJamSessions.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Digital Jam Sessions. This is Mookie Callahan, your trusty deputy guest host for the Digital Jam Sessions. I'm live from IBC in Amsterdam. That's the International Broadcasting Conference. It's September 14, 2018. I've been training a couple amazing panels in the content and immersive editorial cross-production spaces. And one of my favorite ones was yesterday with these two very talented, lovely ladies in front of me, Sahara Rasul from Contrast, the Digital Studios Al Jazeera, and Claire Hungate from Brave Bison, formerly wall-to-wall Warner Brothers and other other great acquaintances that we have down the road. So we're going to be chatting a lot about where we picked up from from our panel yesterday about some of the content that's being produced out there within your own companies and what you're seeing, the platforms where it's going, some of the techniques and the audiences and kind of catering to this crazy two seconds of attention span lifestyle that people are living nowadays. So we're going to kick things off again. Uh, it, I'm Muki. I'm an executive digital producer covering a lot of cross-platform, very large-scale productions, but have a giant vertical in the immersive content space, which brings me here. And to my left is Claire. Can you introduce yourself, where you come from, what you do, mother's maiden name, favorite goulash? Do I have to give you my pin code? Yes, and your pin code. That's fine, isn't it? My name is Claire Hungate. I am the CEO of Brave Bison. We are a social video company, so everything we do exists in the social space. For us, social video is video content that cre- creates discussions to be shared in the, in, uh, across social media platforms. So we talk about three pillars of service, strategy, origination, distribution, end-to-end service, working for brands, companies, and ourselves, running a number of our own channels, but creating, distributing, monetizing content in the digital ecosphere. Right. And that's uh, we're going to get back, back to a little bit of your career history and how you kind of have morphed in this space. Just a little touch. Okay. Well, why not? Um, how long have you got? I know. Well, <laughs> how long have we got? Oh, another five minutes. That's cool. And welcome, Zara. Welcome to Amsterdam. Uh, thanks, Muki. Do you want me to tell us about yeah who you are, where you come from? Uh, we already know your mother's maiden name, so we don't need to go through that. That's a different <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I'm Zara Rasul, and I'm currently uh, the head of Contrast, which is an immersive media studio at Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera Digital. And uh, the mandate for the studio is to look at new and emerging tech and how we can use that to do more innovative storytelling and journalism. So everything from VR to AR to volumetric video to photogrammetry, um, anything in that space of non-linear, non-traditional storytelling is what we deal with. Right. And Contrast is quite new, isn't it? Yeah. we. Uh, I joined the company a year and a half ago and we launched a year back. So, yes, very new. Right. And can you explain a little bit more like why Al Jazeera decided to, to go down this route of this type of format and the content and some of the sto- the way that you're telling these stories? I mean, I I wish there was a a more strategic answer I could give. They just wanted to do something more innovative. And everybody, all news organizations were were testing out VR. And uh, so, you know, they just wanted to get on that bandwagon, I guess, and wanted to seem relevant. And then they brought me on, firstly, initially only to do 360 content and then decided that, well, they wanted to invest more in this space. Mm -hmm. And we envisioned a studio that would create more innovative content. Right. So that's how we came about. Brilliant. And then Claire, about tell us a little bit more about Brave Bison and I think the, the content that's being produced. I'm kind of specifically interested in, in Mother and its perk, right? Yep. Great. Mm-hmm. Got that one right. Yeah. So if you could share with our listeners these new channels that you've launched and you know so what brought the three of us together yesterday and the, the two of you specifically you know this in this day and age of content creation you could still get a good message across and reach a decent portion of your audience regardless of your format and although you guys are creating quite different types of format maybe with different angles there's still some common messages there's still some common ambitions and goals so if you don't mind telling us a bit more about mother <laughs> And Perk. Yeah, sure. So Mother and Perk are new multi-platform channels that we are launching. So we have a, a, a you know big portfolio of channels. We have 20 channels now. We reach between four to six billion people a month across those channels, across YouTube, Facebook, Instagram mainly, but we're also working with Snap. 
chat and Twitch. And that's a very mixed portfolio of channels. Some of them are very, very high viewing Facebook channels that use UGC licensed content to drive views. Others of them are more highly editorialized. We have a big football channel called Slash Football, mm-hmm. very much aimed at a, a kind of passionate, creator-led, grassroots football audience. It's not really aimed at Premier League. We think young people are a bit cynical about the Premier League and big salaries, slightly detached from that. But what they're interested in is other relatable stories, watching you know, other people that could be them, that are within their grasp, within their, their kind of everyday knowledge. So that's Slash. And then we're launching two new channels, Mother, M-U-T-H-A, which Down is the kids. Mother Earth. <laughs> But uh, yeah, for the, for the for the kids, that's concerned with sustainability and conscious living. Yeah. We think there, you know, a, the generation of people, our Gen Z and millennials, are concerned with the impact they have on the planet. Mm-hmm. We think there's a big audience out there for content in that sustainability space. But what we want to do is we'll we'll look at different verticals that we know drive huge audiences in social, but we'll look at those through the lens of sustainability. So sport, lifestyle, fashion and beauty, sorry, not sport, travel, tech and food, yeah. but looking through the lens of sustainability and using entertainment to change the way people behave. Mm-hmm. So rather than seas full of plastic that terrify people and people think there's nothing I can do about that, mm-hmm. it looks awful, but I can't change anything. We think the way to make people change their behavior is by entertaining them, is by inspiring them and showing them a different way. Right. Perk is work and careers for that young audience, new generation of people entering education and the workforce, big, big ideas about their career, look at work very differently, you know, potentially to the way I did. You know, they're not necessarily looking for a career for life, but they were, you know, born through a recession. Mm. They've seen that what that commitment to work did to their parents didn't do them any good. So they have big ideas about what they want to achieve, but aren't necessarily tooled up to achieve those things. But they don't want to be told what to do Mm. by old people or by banks or by teachers or by parents. But we can use, you know, an editorial voice, people like them to inspire them in their future career choices. Mm-hmm. So it's like relatable content is what's also bringing us together. I mean, what, what, are, what are your thoughts about how, how, this, how do you make the relatable content as far as we can kind of like have our conversation going a little bit, a little bit more in full? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I agree with so much of what, what, what Claire said. You know, we're working in a very specific medium, so it's mm-hmm. harder for us to have more insight on our audience mm-hmm. just because the headset companies got the data so closely, yeah. we don't have access to it. So I agree with with everything that Claire mentioned. Unfortunately for us, since we're working in the immersive space and uh, we are dependent on especially headset companies to provide us data, which they don't. They got the data really closely. So it's hard for us to understand the consumption patterns of our audience. But what we've been trying to do is, uh, you know, my, my entire team, we're all below 30, all of us. And we're creating content for that audience. And so, you know, we, we're we trying to, the, the way we've been looking at our editorial, apart from the kind of stories that we tell, we are using younger people, we're using communities to work with them in order to find out or to figure out what are the stories that they want to hear mm-hmm. and what is the perspective and the lens that, they're ta- that they would like us to take for stories that we're telling about their communities. Mm-hmm. And I think that is that, that has been greatly successful because it's helped build trust in those communities. Mm-hmm. Not that we're trying to push a specific agenda. We are just trying to understand um, how they look at the world and uh, how they look at issues. Mm-hmm. And uh, we try to create stories around that. So again, some similar similarities here. You know, the, that relatable content. It's connecting. It's connecting with an audience that could be so fickle. They may like it one second and then turn around and and change their mind the next second. So how do you re, how do you keep them and retain them? I think- for, that's a question for both of you. It, it, it's an audience with a highly developed bullshit meter. 
So yeah. they know straight away whether something's authentic or not. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of highly developed in terms of social and their use of technology. But at the same time, they're cynical about it because they were born with it. They can read it. So It's in their DNA. It's on the contract when they're born. It's in their DNA. So, you know, we talk a lot about real people, real stories. And, and a lot of what we do revolves around real people, real stories, relatable content told in a relatable way. Yeah, sorry. And you're finding that, that real people, real stories are the editorial that sticks the hardest for us yeah i mean you know fiction works on 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 social as well i mean you know jeffrey katzenberg's got six billion dollars to to tell that story right so that's 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 scripted content yeah but but for us that Mm -hmm. that works and do you think you're gonna ever go down scripted content route from a 360 journalistic point of view definitely i think Mm -hmm. that with immersive media Having worked in traditional journalism, I feel like in immersive media, you have to do that more and more. Like our shoots are a lot more tightly directed than compared to um, linear traditional documentary, just because there is so much less manipulation you can do in the post, especially for VR docs. For example, if you've captured a shot, that's a shot that you're going to use. You can't zoom into or do a cut, cut away in order to you know give a different angle so you really need to know what you're actually getting and so in in that sense i feel like it is already a medium that is very conducive to scripted content Mm. and so that's yeah we're already working on and it's a different kind of script that you're writing when you're writing in 360 for a 360 storyboard it is so different from a, a traditional linear or even telling that story and i know from experience as to as do you guys. I mean, as far as like Brave Bison goes, do you think you're going to be kind of delving into more immersive style storytelling? Is that something that you're interested in? Or, I mean, maybe down the road somewhere? It, you, you, can do, you can confirm or deny, Claire. It's fine. It, it's a different type of storytelling that fits a particular context and expectation of the viewer, I suppose. Mm. I don't think any of the channels that we currently have, it would fit within the, the, the kind of editorial voice, the tone that we have. I think some of it's to do with the expectation of the person coming to that channel and what, they, what they're looking for, I think. So this could be a time could tell kind of yeah it's not 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 currently on our roadmap but i but i can see it's you know exciting technology and storytelling that yeah. that, that people are getting involved in right and especially at conferences like IBC the international broadcasting conference which has morphed so much into tech spaces and new technology and cutting edge type of technology on how we create the content and view it and distribute it et cetera, et cetera. Are we able to talk a little bit about partnerships? And, you know, you mentioned your mother uh, yesterday during the presentation about the partnership with the UN. My mother. Your mother, girl. <laughs> mother. Oh, yeah, she, how is she doing? Mother. You, your mother's made a name, right? We just say that. Are you able to kind of expand on the UN, you know, partnership that you've developed? And, and same for you, Zara, because I know you also have a UN connection. Yeah, so we work with multiple partners. We work with lots of brands, but on Mother, because of the importance of the, the subject matter, we partnered with the UN Sustainable Living Program. So the UN are doing lots of incredible work and projects, research, have incredible knowledge in this area. They believe, as we do, that the best way to change behavior is by is through entertainment, by reaching a young audience and persuading them to change their, their, their behavior at a very early stage. But they don't have the communication channels to be able to do that themselves. And so they give us access to their projects. They help by giving us kind of information and knowledge and research. And we help by creating content that reaches, appeals to, engages the audience that they need to reach. And it's the cred and the gravitas that comes with with a giant company or, you know, nonprofit and it kind of can skew toward tech for good in a way, which is what it is, it comes up in every conference that I that I deal with. I'm sure same for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, they get they, they, they get a lot of value in return, right? They get, yeah, these are great brands to be partnering with, but we also have a lot to offer to them because they are not able to reach the audience that they are wanting to reach. They mm-hmm. don't have the storytelling capabilities. They don't know how These to are the talk partners. To, yeah, they yeah. don't know how to talk to a younger audience, and so they come to partners like us, and that's what we bring to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that there is a mutually beneficial relationship in, in, in those partnerships, 
we work on uh, sponsor we work on quite a lot of sponsored content in fact most of our original edit uh, short docs have been sponsored by mostly non for profit organizations or aid organizations and the way it works for us is that we find organizations that align on the issues that we are interested in covering and then they sort of they, they cover all of the production costs um, for the piece and in return we give them or we work on a really great story and then we distribute it for them on all of our platforms right but they don't get any say over editorial right okay so that's that's an that's a refreshing <laughs> process to kind of like grasp as we are all very well versed in that kind of afp style you know in the sign off process and stakeholders mm-hmm. that's what you know al jazeera and news network they have to be responsible for the for the news and the the verification of that news i mean you know it's slightly different when we work with organizations we usually give them you know a right to view and comment on accuracy and representation yeah. for instance so both scenarios are fair <laughs> to be frank but no fake news no fake news or whatever you do so. so it's an incredible resource for us to have you know sustainability is such a you know an area full of yeah. pitfalls you know what you might think is sustainable you know there's yeah. there's just so many pitfalls of you know different partners and what different brands are doing yeah. and one particular message over here for what they're doing over here so you know actually working with a partner like the UN who have been researching this for years and years yeah. and years actually to be able to give you that guidance is you know very very useful you know for instance you look at the fashion industry fashion mm. industry talks a lot about production yeah but what they don't talk about and they don't want to and they talk about sustainable production methods but they never talk about consumption yeah. because what they need to be doing really is persuading people to buy less because everyone buys stuff that they cycle and recycle blah 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 yeah. but obviously that's not in their interest so the you know, fashion industry talks a lot about sustainable production very rarely they talk about consumption. Mm, interesting. That's a whole nother podcast girls. I think we can reconvene back in London for sure. We're going to wrap things up because we keep this chat a little bit short and sweet. One thing we do at Digital Jam Sessions is ask you to give your contribution of what you think needs to change whether that be technical or cultural in this world to kind of uh, move us to the next level. From a professional standpoint, mm-hmm. I I wish there was more collabor uh, there was more collaboration between the technologists and storytellers. One of my biggest frustrations is that people who are working in the technology space work in a silo and storytellers work in a silo. And because of that we're not able to leverage on each other's strengths. Mm-hmm. If we collaborated, I think we could have much better, more meaningful, more impactful stories that were using the most recent technology. Brilliant. And Claire, one thing that you think needs to change be that cultural or technological? I think there's a company we're very concerned with creating content with purpose. We reach an awful lot of people on a weekly and monthly basis. Social media can be, uh, you know, taken quite a lot of blame sometimes rightly for filling our feeds with nonsense, rubbish, fake news, whatever. And so I think we have a responsibility to use part of you know that power we have to create content with 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 some purpose obviously we're a commercial organization and that has to be balanced up but you know creating content with purpose is is primary for us i think from from my answer to that question um i agree with both of you guys uh, 10000% but i'm going to go to add to claire's point that maybe the social platforms you know up their game in some of that responsibility as, as channels and platforms to help you as creators and distribution partners to be more comfortable and safe and thus in return the fans will have a little bit more stability and and guidance what's the word i'm thinking of yeah, trust <laughs> it's trust really isn't it guys isn't it yeah so we're going to wrap things up thank you guys so much and if you don't mind giving our listeners your social hand of choice where we can where they can find you Sure uh my twitter handle is zara rasul z a h r a rasul r a s o l and claire my twitter handle is just claire hungate c l a i r e h u n g a t e and as usual you can find me at muki approved on twitter and everywhere else and also digital jam ltd on all social handles. Thank you so much again for listening. If you like what you heard, please be sure to add in your comments and share with all your friends and neighbors, lovers, enemies, frenemies. And thank you again. We'll see you soon. Thank you ladies. Thanks. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe and review and follow us on Twitter at Digital Jam LTD.
Thinking of starting your own podcast? Why not speak to the GL Pro UK team? They handle all of our podcasting service needs. Tell them that Digital Jam Session sent you and you'll get 10% off your first order. Find out more at www.glpro.co.uk. DigitalJamSessions.com